Here we have a simple chemical equation. In this case, it's a word equation, and we have hydrogen plus oxygen will give us water. Okay, so two things being added together will form our water on the other side. And we give two different names for the things we start with and the things which we end up with. On the left hand side of your equation, these substances are known as reactants. Okay, reactants. That makes sense because they're reacting together to form our products. So we produce the products by reacting the reactants. So that's products. Sometimes they might ask you to name the reactants and you'll be looking at the left hand side of your equation. In this case, hydrogen and oxygen. Now, in general, this kind of equation is called a word equation. Word equation. And that, of course, makes sense because we have written all the substances as words. These equations aren't as useful as the next type of equation, which I'll show you, but they're a good starting point. The reason why they're not as useful as the next type of equation is if you have a look at water, from the equation, we can't actually see what water is made up of. Now, we should know that water is H2O, two hydrogens and an oxygen. That's common sense to us because we learn that from a very young age. But from looking from at the equation, we cannot actually see that the hydrogen and the oxygen make up water. We'd have to work it out given the rest of the equation. And that's not very useful when we come to more complicated compounds. So here's another example. In this reaction, we start with calcium carbonate and we form calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Now you should recognize that this is a thermal decomposition and we're starting with one reactant and we end up with more than one product. Sometimes you'll see heat written here. The reason it's written over the arrow and not next to the calcium carbonate is because heat is not a chemical. It's not a chemical substance. It's actually a form of energy. Heat actually really represents thermal energy. And so it's a condition, but not a substance taking part in the reaction. Now from this equation, we do not know how many carbons, how many oxygens, how many calciums make up calcium carbonate or calcium oxide or carbon dioxide. We should know that carbon dioxide is CO2 because that is common sense. But as you can see, there's only so much information that we can take from this form of equation. And that is why we use another form, which is called the symbol equation. Symbol equation. Now this is the symbol equation for the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. Now this is way more useful. We can put heat here again if we like. Same principle. But if we look at our reactant on the left hand side, we have calcium carbonate, which is one calcium atom with one carbon atom with three oxygen atoms. OK, so the simplest form of this is one calcium, one carbon, three oxygens. And we produce calcium oxide, which is one calcium and one oxygen plus CO2, which is one carbon and two oxygens. It's important here to note that we are not actually saying that in this reaction in a test tube, one atom of calcium and one atom of carbon and three atoms of oxygen are reacting. This is the simplest ratio in this equation, and that is why we put the numbers to the reactants and to the products. In real life, if we are doing this reaction in a test tube, then there will be billions of all of these, okay? But we can't use those numbers, so we use the simplest form. Now, another important thing that we need to do in reactions is to balance. So make sure that all the atoms on the left hand side have equal numbers on the right hand side. And that is because we can't just snap our fingers and create atoms out of nothing or destroy atoms and get rid of them. Those atoms will be either in the products or in the reactants. So we need to make sure they're balanced. Now, if we have a look, we have one calcium. OK, one calcium and we have one calcium on the right hand side as well. We have one carbon on the left hand side and one carbon on the right hand side. We have three oxygens on the left hand side. Okay, three. And so here we have one 
and then we have another two there making three oxygens. So luckily enough, I didn't have to play around with any numbers. Uh, this reaction is actually already balanced. If we have another reaction which looks like this, this is a combustion reaction. I'm sure you recognize it. We are burning this fuel, okay? This fuel is actually ethanol in oxygen, and that is going to form carbon dioxide and water. Now, the left-hand side is our reactants, and the right-hand side shows our products. What you may notice here, though, is that the numbers do not balance. For example, we have two carbons here, but there is only one carbon in CO2. And so we realize that we can't just leave it like this. We need to make sure that our reactants and products are balanced because we can't destroy or create atoms out of nothing. And so we need to make these numbers right. Now, there is a trick to this. In this case, we can see that oxygen is present in everything, okay? Oxygen is in the ethanol, obviously in oxygen gas, in carbon dioxide, and in water. That means that it's gonna be really difficult to put any numbers in front of anything if we are just looking at the oxygen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore the oxygen at the moment, and we're gonna try and balance everything else. Carbon, for example, only appears on the left-hand side in the ethanol, okay? There's no carbon in oxygen gas. And carbon also only appears on the right hand side in carbon dioxide because there's no carbon in water. That means that the number of carbons in ethanol must equal the number of carbons in carbon dioxide. Now there are two carbons in ethanol. There is only one carbon in carbon dioxide. And so that means we need two of those because that will make two carbons in total. Now we apply the same principle to the hydrogens. Now in ethanol there are six hydrogens six hydrogens here and that's the only place on the left hand side of the reaction where we have hydrogens there's no hydrogen in oxygen gas on the right hand side the only place where we find hydrogens is in the water because there is no hydrogen in carbon dioxide that means the number of hydrogens between those two must equal each other so we have six here and we have two hydrogens in the water so we don't need six waters because each water has two. So we only need three waters to make six hydrogens in total. In this case, we now have six hydrogens on the left-hand side and six hydrogens on the right-hand side. So to summarize that, we have two carbons on the left and two carbons on the right, six hydrogens on the left, six hydrogens on the right, and now we need to balance the oxygens because we've already determined how many carbon dioxides and waters that we need. So let's count the oxygens on the left hand side. We have one in ethanol and two more in oxygen, making three. On the right hand side, we have two CO2s. Each one of those has two oxygens, so that's four plus three lots of waters, and there's one oxygen in each water. So three oxygens. That gives us seven oxygens in total. And so how do we get from the number three to the number seven? Well, we obviously need to add a number of four oxygens. And how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm not going to change this ethanol because we've already balanced the carbons and the hydrogens and that would muck everything up. But this oxygen only contains oxygen. So we need to add four oxygens but each one of these has two oxygen atoms in it. So two of these will give us four oxygens, okay? That's two more of these on top of what we've already got, because we've already got one. So two more will give us three oxygens in total. Three oxygens. Now we have seven oxygens on this side, because we have one in ethanol and six in total from the oxygen atoms. So we can say we now have a total of seven. Now all the um, numbers are balanced. This means that the whole equation is balanced. And this is our balanced equation for the combustion of ethanol. Brilliant. So one last important thing I want to add is that we can see we have the same amount of atoms on the left-hand side as we do on the right-hand side. All of those atoms have a mass and they give rise to the mass that we can see when we weigh something in grams or kilograms. 
That means that at the start of the reaction and at the end of the reaction, the overall mass of our system has not changed at all. Now, if we carried this out in an open system where gas was allowed to escape or something, the mass might go down because carbon dioxide is gas and it might escape. But you won't be asked what the mass is in an open system like that. If this is a closed system and we have a stopper on top of a test tube where we're carrying out a reaction, that means nothing is allowed to escape, which means that from the start of the reaction to the end of the reaction, the mass stays exactly the same. And so if at the start of this reaction, okay, in a closed system, we had a mass of 10 grams in our test tube. If we allowed the reaction to continue, at the end, the mass, which we would be able to read on the scales, would still be 10 grams because none of the gas has been allowed to escape. It still has the same mass as when it started. And so that is why the mass would not change overall. So we'll stop there. I hope that's been helpful. Please do comment below if you have any questions on this, because I know it, it was a lot of information in a short period of time. But I will see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.